Welcome to Dulce America. Hello everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch and I am here at McDaniel College in Westminster, Maryland where the first day of Common Ground on the Hill, week three, is taking place. I snuck away because I want to share some stuff with you. I've been working on this arrangement for the music of the night from the Phantom of the Opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how you can take difficult arrangements for songs that change keys and so forth and still make them work on the mountain dulcimer with our limited range. But before I do that, I want to give a big shout out to Barbara Merrow. Barbara, one of my patrons, thank you very much for joining on board with me. I appreciate you and your dedication, and I hope you're having a great time and not getting too lost in all the stuff I have available there. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Barbara, for being one of the people who pledged in and got this shout out on Dulce America. Those of you out there wondering what Patreon is, Picture it kind of like Spotify or Netflix. It basically is a subscription service, but every artist who does a Patreon, it's really all about them, whether it be dance or music or comic books or anything like that. For my Patreon, basically you get all of my music, all of my CDs, all my books, all my tablature, all the videos, all the concert shots, everything for just $5 a month. You get entry-level access, plus you get all the new stuff I'm producing right now, and you get to ask direct questions of me where I make videos for you. Uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of people are having a lot of fun right now discovering all I've got available in the Patreon vault, and that's just $5 a month. Now, there are tiers that go a little bit higher, uh, $10, $12, and you get additional perks for signing on at a higher dollar amount. You can join anytime, you can quit anytime, and that music, when you sign up, is all of yours. So, if you're interested in joining up on Patreon, all you have to do is follow the link right down here. That's patreon.com slash bingfutch. 
make sure you go to the featured tag section and go to open house. That's all the public stuff you can download. Have fun. That's all yours. And then please do think about signing up and be like Barbara Merrow and so many other folks. Now I forget what the number is right now, but it's changing and growing every single day. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. So let's walk through the music of the night here and I'll show you my fingerings and how I got through to this point. I'm uh, not through with it. I want to put an intro in and I want to do some more upper register stuff the second time through the uh, verses. But I, I have enough to show you how I got through the craziest part of this, which is negotiating the key change. So let's go ahead and step into it, starting with the melody. Whenever I'm arranging a piece of music, the first thing I do is I make sure I've got the melody. One of the unsung written rules of songwriting is uh, if you've got a chord and a melody is going over the top of that chord, you want to pull from the chord. The chord's associated with a scale. Let's say we got D major chord. So notes from the D major scale are going to be the best notes you can use for the melody. But on top of that, the best, very best notes you can use are notes that are actually inside of the supporting chord. That's the first, the third, and the fifth notes of the scale. They're going to be the best. So if you're going to have a note that's going to hang out for a long period of time, it's good to have it hang out on one of the notes inside of the chord that supports it. You can use any of the other notes. They're a lot better as passing tones. And this is coming from a songwriting perspective. They're good for passing notes. But if you're going to have a note sustained for a long period of time, you kind of want to make sure that it's going to be one of the notes that are inside of the chord that supports it. Now, because a lot of songwriters do follow this, it's a lot easier when you're putting together an arrangement to just start with the melody and then you can piece in the other two strings, the other two notes that form the chord where that melody is located. This right here is the basis for chord melody playing, arranging, and so forth. So I made sure I had all the melody notes. Now I do have the one and a half, the six and a half, and I have the eight and a half as well as the thirteen and a half. Turns out for this tune, the eight and a half needed or was exactly the fret that I needed in order to play all the way through this melody. It's been in my head for a long time. I've wanted to do it, but I knew based on my ears that there was going to be a tricky section in here and the eight and a half made it happen. So I'm going to walk through the melody starting from the second fret. Sorry, we're going to the middle string for the next melody note. So. Do that again. Now we're going to do a, part, a G major chord and we're going to walk the melody up the melody string. And we got throttle up by the plane just as I was demonstrating that, so we'll wait for him to go away. We're right by an airstrip. And besides that, you may notice down here I've got two ukulele cases shielding my audio recorder because it's been windy and I, I want you to be able to hear what's going on. So a lot of work went into this setup. It's crazy. Anyway, here we go. We're going to go G major and then walk up the melody string. I got my pinky is going to take the one. Thumb takes the two. Walks up to three. And then this whole thing comes down to 101. Thumb comes up to A at the fourth fret on the melody string. And then we go to this part. So this is a G major chord right here. So we're going to go hitting there at the seventh fret on the melody string. Thumb comes up to the eighth fret. And you can do it like that, or you can do the harmony for that, which is going to be this. And the harmony is on the middle string right there at the fifth fret. And this guy is actually going to hover like right above here. It's a big state. Go somewhere else for now. <laughs> okay, so that melody and the harmony right there. Walk it down. Do that twice. Now we're going to go to C major. There's that melody note at the seventh fret. Go back to G. Next melody note, seventh fret, middle string. Sorry, open on the middle string. So we're going to go like this. Here's the C, G, 
hit that middle string, and then go here to four on the melody string. Then 102, coming down to 101. Using my ring finger, because I'm coming back with my thumb here. Back to two. One, still being held by the ring finger and open. We'll do that again, that whole sequence. G. To C. Middle string. And here comes another one. It was quieter early, I swear. Okay. Now, here's where things start getting weird. We get into a different key, and um, we start off with C. So we're gonna go with our pickup notes from two to four. Close your, close your. We come up here, eyes is gonna be at the eighth fret melody string. We form our L-shaped C major chord. Thumb's gonna come down to seven. Ring finger's already got, because I bar my L-shaped chords, ring finger's already got the 6th fret melody string, so... Sorry. Thumb on the middle string at the 8th fret. Walk it down to 7, then pick it up entirely. And what you've got on the middle string at the 6th fret is a melody note. Then we're going to change that to an F major. So obviously you're going to need to have a one and a half fret and an eight and a half fret for this arrangement. So we walk with the thumb down the melody string. Next pickups are going to be four and six. Now this is where it gets interesting. All the melody notes are there, but the chords not. What's happening there is we have gone from C. We're kind of in the key. We've kind of switched keys to F. Um, there are still some accidentals here, but we've gone from the key of D to the key of F. So we've got a C, and we've got F. Okay. So uh, then we come up, and the next chord would be a B flat. We can't do a B flat because uh, we can't. <laughs> we don't have a B flat. We can't do a B flat major chord. But the melody uses an F natural, which is on the melody string here at the 8.5 fret. So what I'm doing and choosing to do is not worry about that chord that I don't have. I'm going to instead focus on the melody notes that I do have. And we're not missing any melody notes for this song. So I'm going to drop that chord out after the F and just right up here. And then I go ahead and I bring in a chord that I do have, E major. And that gets me over that sticky part. Just to think, for years and years, I have not even tried to play this song because I wasn't sure how to negotiate that one little section. Sure, it may seem a little weird to some people. You're not playing a chord there, but the melody is what people hum. People don't hum chords. They do hum melodies. So as long as you ride that, and what I'm trying to do right now is figure out a nice, easy way to get there from a full-bodied F major chord and not have everything choke the way it is. So that's one of the things that happens when you work with an arrangement over time is you smooth it out and kind of figure out the best things to do with it. Anyway, so we come from that, we do our melody, which is eight and a half to eight to seven to six to five, and then we can go ahead and piece in the E major. Oh, guess who's back? I might make a note of this and not come out here between 12 and 1.30. Because apparently that's like high time, busy time at the airport. Okay, next thing we're going to do here uh, is get into an A major chord. We're going to anchor the melody with the 8th uh, fret there. There's our A major. Thumb comes down to 7. Ring finger gets to 6.5. Thumb comes to the 8th fret and middle. Thumb comes up and you got your index finger still there. 
So I'm going to do that whole sequence together here. That's going to be... And then high note is going to be up here at 11. Then we're going to do an F sharp minor. And then this chord, which is kind of hard, it's technically a G sharp minor 11 chord. Yeah, I know. What? We're not playing all the notes involved there. What we are playing is this. It's a very unusual chord. G sharp minor 11. So we go from the F sharp minor. Ring fingers coming down to get the fifth fret melody string. Thumb gets the six and a half on melody, walks up to seven, and then we bring the whole thing back down to our F sharp minor. And then go back to the verse into the chorus. there it's just a little run I'm doing a two one two one open two one open I'm plucking the first couple I could have plucking the first one and then I'm doing hammer-ons and pull-offs for the rest of them just a sort of little slight little run there uh, and I'll probably keep those in as far as flourishes in the middle of the verses and the choruses. And then of course, unfortunately we can't manage that weird atonal ending of the piece, but we can come pretty close by starting here at the seventh fret and then putting your harmony note on the sixth fret middle string and just walking it up. And then I go up to 11 and then drop this down on the middle string to five and we have a harmony for our final note. And there you have the music of the night and apparently the music of the day is airplanes. Thank you guys very much for joining me. I'll have more coming from the road here on Dulce America. And by the way, I invite you all to send me your welcome to Dulce America video. All you have to do is get you and your dulcimer in front of the camera and say, Welcome to Dulce America. Send me that and I'll stick it right on the front of an upcoming episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Keep playing and have fun.